Okay, so today uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the posterior triangle of the neck. Um, in the neck, we've got two major triangles, the anterior triangle and the posterior triangle. Um, they are divided uh, by the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Uh, this is again uh, the posterior uh, triangle of the neck. Um, its apex uh, is superior and its base lies inferiorly. And we can better see that on the other side. Here. This is again uh, the base of the posterior triangle of the neck. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle, this is the trapezius muscle, and this is the platysma muscle. And uh, here is its apex superiorly. Okay. Uh, about boundaries of the posterior triangle of the neck. Uh, anterior boundary is posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The posterior border is anterior border of the trapezius muscle. And uh, inferiorly, um, it is bounded by middle third of the clavicle. So the clavicle has been removed here, but it, uh, it lies this way. It has got medial third, middle third, and lateral third. The middle third of the clavicle forms inferior border of the posterior triangle. Uh, the floor of the posterior triangle is formed by a group of muscles. We have five of them. Uh, so if we can remove this, uh, we have the uh, scalene is anterior. Actually, only a part of the scalene is anterior. See, if we put this back here, um, it is only a part of the uh, scalene is anterior that takes part in the floor of the posterior triangle. And then we've got the scalene is medius, uh, levator scapulae. Uh, this is the trapezius, if you remove it. Uh, levator scapulae, it elevates the scapula. And we have uh, Siplinus capitis attaching to the superior nuchal line, Siplinus capitis, and uh, semispinalis capitis. Semispinalis capitis. So these five muscles, uh, semispinalis capitis, Siplinus capitis, um, levator scapulae, um, scalenus medius, and a part of the scalenus anterior forms uh, the floor of the posterior triangle and they are covered by prevertebral fascia uh, but we have to notice that uh, the uh, scalenus posterior is deeper so it will not form a uh, floor uh, of the triangle uh, the roof of the posterior triangle of the neck is formed uh, by an investing layer of deep cervical fascia in the skin Uh, this is uh, scalene is anterior uh, between the subclavian vein and subclavian artery. Scalene is anterior. Scalene is medius. Scalene is posterior. Levator scapulae. Siplinus capitis. Semispinalis capitis. Trapezius. The muscles of the posterior triangle of the neck uh, here. Uh, we have the semispinalis capitis and the uh, siplinus capitis. They are actually not uh, very distinguishable here. Uh, okay, uh, so this is all uh, the uh, siplinus capitis. Uh, and then, uh, of course, this is uh, the trapezius, right? Trapezius. And uh, this is the levator scapulae. See all of that? Levator scapulae. Levator scapulae. It actually appears as three different bands here. But this is all the levator scapulae. Uh, and then we've got the three scalenous uh, muscles. Uh, this is the uh, part of the brachial plexus. Uh, uh, this lies between the anterior and medius scalenous muscles. So uh, this one is scalenous anterior. See, scalenous anterior. This one is scalenous medius. Uh, this this one is uh, see sorry this one this one is scalenus posterior 
it's deeper uh, compared to the others. Uh, so this is uh, scalene is posterior, scalene is medius, anterior, uh, levator scapulae, and so on. Again on this side, uh, we have uh, here somewhere uh, semispinalis capitis. This is uh, sepalinus capitis attaching to the superior nuchal line. This is the levator uh, scapulae. Uh, this one appears as two bands on this side, okay? This is the levator scapulae. This is the scalenus posterior. Scalenus posterior, it's deeper, see? Scalenus posterior, but this is part of the scalenus medius. Scalenus medius. And this is scalenus anterior. Of course, these are uh, parts of the brachial plexus. So scalenus anterior, scalenus medius, scalenus posterior, levator scapulae, and so on. Uh, a very important uh, plexus uh, or nervous plexus that is uh, associated with the posterior triangle is the cervical plexus. Uh, these are some branches of the cervical plexus. Uh, so the cervical plexus is formed by anterior rami of C1, C2, C3, and C4. Um, it has got some branches. Uh, the branches um, are uh, appearing uh, at the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So here uh, we can see the lesser occipital nerve. Uh, this is anterior ramus of C2. Here we can see the great auricular nerve. This is anterior ramus of C2 and C3. This one, uh, it's horizontal. So it's called transverse cervical nerve or transverse cutaneous nerve of the neck. Uh, and again, this is anterior ramus of C2 and C3. And uh, finally, on the other side, we can see that better. We have got the supraclavicular nerves. They are medial, intermediate, and lateral branches. The supraclavicular nerves are anterior rami of C3 and C4. On this side, we can again see the other branches of the uh, cervical plexus. This is posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. So uh, this is great auricular nerve going to the auricle. Um, again, this is a lesser occipital nerve. Um, and as we said, uh, the supraclavicular nerves. And here uh, we have the transverse cervical nerves. They are also sometimes called anterior cervical nerves or transverse cutaneous nerve, nerves of the neck. Uh, these could also be the transverse cutaneous nerves of the neck, but seriously, it's not very important to know these. Uh, it's important to know that the greater occipital nerves uh, are posterior rami of the C2. Uh, so because it's not anterior ramus, it will not be a branch of the cervical plexus. Uh, these uh, nerves that we can see on the back are posterior rami of the uh, spinal nerves, either being cervical nerves or thoracic nerves. Uh, this one, was, uh, which was the greater occipital nerve, was posterior ramus of the uh, C2, uh, but this this goes deeper. So this could be posterior ramus of the C3 or maybe C4 and just like that. Uh, here uh, we can see the subclavian vein and this is the internal jugular vein. This is internal because it lies deep to the sternocleidomastoid. See, this is the sternocleidomastoid. Deep to that we have internal jugular. Superficial to that we have uh, external jugular vein. Uh, this is the uh, subclavian vein and the subclavian artery. Uh, between these two, uh, we've got uh, the scalenus anterior muscle. Uh, and this is the scalenus medius muscle. Be uh, between the scalenus anterior and medius muscles, we've got trunks of the brachial plexus.
uh, this is the common carotid artery if you can get closer common carotid artery and uh, this is site of the bifurcation to the external uh, carotid and internal carotid arteries uh, the common carotid internal jugular vein uh, and vagus nerves uh, all lie in a sheath which is called the carotid sheath so between the common carotid and the internal jugular, uh, the nerve that is lying is the vagus nerve which is cranial nerve 10 and uh, this one anterior to that is ansa cervicalis ansa cervicalis uh, okay so the ansa cervicalis is uh, formed by two roots the inferior root by anterior ramus of uh, c2 and c3 uh, the superior one by um, a branch from c1 uh, of course anterior ramus of c1 again uh, so the ansa cervicalis will supply three muscles of the inferior higher muscles uh, uh, supplying the uh, if you can see that yes that's it uh, the sternohyoid uh, sternohyoid muscle uh, and then the uh, sternothyroid one sternothyroid uh, and also omohyoid okay omohyoid uh, but uh, we have to be careful that the uh, thyrohyoid um, is supplied through the uh, hypoglossal nerve so let's actually talk about that also uh, this was about uh, ansa cervicalis uh, another motor branch uh, from the cervical plexus uh, is a branch from the anterior ramus of c1 which joins the hypoglossal nerve so this is the hypoglossal um, here uh, this is see this is the hypoglossal nerve and uh, that's it hypoglossal nerve uh, a branch from the anterior ramus of c1 joins the hypoglossal uh, to supply um, geniohyoid and also thyrohyoid okay so this is thyrohyoid this was thyrohyoid Uh, this one is the phrenic nerve uh, passing over the scalp is anterior. Uh, the phrenic nerve uh, is also considered uh, one of the motor branches of the cervical plexus, but it's not uh, completely owned by the cervical plexus, but also uh, from the brachial plexus. Uh, we know that the brachial plexus uh, is formed by uh, anterior MI of uh, C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. Uh, the phrenic nerve comes from anterior MI of C3, C4, and C5. The C3 and C4 are from the uh, cervical plexus, the C5 from the brachial plexus. Uh, this is a uh, spinal part of the accessory nerve, which is cranial nerve 11. And see, again, here, uh, this is a continuation of that uh, at the anterior border of the trapezius. Of course, it supplies both the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscle muscles. Um, these are branches from the cervical plexus and we can see that better here see branches from the cervical plexus Uh, as we said, uh, this is the um, subclavian artery. From there, we've got the thyrocervical trunk. From the thyrocervical trunk, we've got the suprascapular artery, transverse cervical artery, and inferior thyroid artery. So this could be uh, the inferior thyroid artery going to the uh, thyroid gland. And from the inferior thyroid artery, we've got the ascending cervical artery. So uh, this could be the ascending cervical artery. Uh, sensory branches of the uh, cervical plexus, we have great auricular nerve. Uh, transverse uh, or anterior cervical nerve, uh, lesser occipital nerve, and uh, supraclavicular nerves. Uh, this is spinal part of the accessory nerve. Again, sensory branches from the cervical plexus on this side. Uh, lesser occipital, lesser occipital, uh, great auricular, uh, transverse or anterior cervical, and uh, supraclavicular. Uh, spinal part of the accessory. Uh, talking about uh, the anterior uh, triangle of the neck, uh, there is the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle here, 
uh, and divides uh, the neck into anterior and posterior triangles. Uh, the anterior triangle is sub subdivided into four uh, separate triangles. Uh, we've got the uh, submental triangle. It's really very small. Uh, here it is. This is the uh, submental triangle, uh, bounded inferiorly by hyoid bone, uh, laterally by anterior belly of the digastric, and anteriorly by midline. Uh, okay, and then uh, we've got the uh, digastric or submandibular triangle. Here it is. This triangle, digastric or submandibular, uh, it's bounded superiorly by inferior margin of the uh, ma mandible bone and inferiorly by anterior and uh, posterior bellies uh, of the digastric. Uh, okay, and then uh, we've got the uh, if this is the sternocleidomastoid uh, here, uh, this is the uh, muscular triangle. Okay, uh, it is bounded anteriorly again by midline, uh, superiorly. Uh, by uh, hyoid vein and laterally uh, by uh, superior belly of omohyoid and uh, anterior border of the uh, sternocleidomastoid uh, and then here uh, we've got the uh, carotid triangle uh, bounded anterior inferiorly by superior belly of uh, omohyoid uh, posteriorly by uh, anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and superiorly by uh, posterior belly of the digastric and also the stylohyoid muscle. Uh, about uh, muscles of anterior triangle of the neck, uh, below the hyoid we've got uh, four uh, infrahyoid muscles. Uh, we've got the uh, sternohyoid, uh, again. Uh, sternohyoid. Uh, we have omohyoid. This is its superior belly. Again here, omohyoid superior belly. Uh, we have uh, sternothyroid. Sternothyroid uh, from the sternum uh, to the thyroid cartilage. Uh, again here, um, this is this is the sternothyroid. Sternothyroid. See, uh, that's it. Okay, and then this is uh, thyrohyoid from thyroid cartilage to hyoid thyrohyoid, and again here, uh, this is thyrohyoid. See, here thyrohyoid. Uh, about the suprahyoid muscles, we've got again four of them. This is mylohyoid. Uh, again, this is the mylohyoid uh, muscle uh, from the mylohyoid line of the mandible. Uh, this is anterior belly of the digastric. Um, this is posterior belly. See, this is it. Uh, posterior belly of the digastric. Uh, going to the mastoid uh, process, okay, mastoid process, and especially to the digastric groove of the mastoid process. Um, so, uh, and we have geniohyoid, but it's really not visible. And we also have stylohyoid. Uh, this is stylohyoid. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this was anterior belly of digastric. Uh, this one, see, uh, more lateral is the posterior belly of digastric. Uh, but this one more medial is stylohyoid. Okay? Stylohyoid from the stylohyoid process to uh, the hyoid bone. Uh, from the stylohyoid, we've got three muscles. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, from the stylohyoid process, we've got three muscles uh, the stylohyoid, uh, the um, stylopharyngeus going to the pharynx, stylopharyngeus going to the pharynx, and styloglossus, this one, styloglossus in close relationship uh, with the tongue. Uh, mm -hmm. Again on this side, anterior belly of digastric, um, posterior belly of digastric, um, stylohyoid, um, stylopharyngeus, and styloglossus. Uh, about uh, some muscles of the neck in the anterior triangle, um, we've got the uh, infrahyoid muscles. Uh, this is the uh, sternohyoid muscle, sternohyoid, uh, again here, sternohyoid, uh, this is sternothyroid, sternothyroid, uh, to the thyroid cartilage, this is the thyroid cartilage, this is lar the laryngeal prominence, this is the trachea, this is the thyroid gland, the isthmus part of it, and the lateral two lobes, uh, 
about the other muscles uh, this is the omohyoid its superior belly omohyoid its superior belly and this is the inferior belly inferior belly of the omohyoid uh, of course in the posterior triangle dividing that into two triangles um, this is the uh, thyrohyoid okay thyrohyoid thyrohyoid mm -hmm. it's basically the same thing here this is the omohyoid its superior belly and its inferior belly uh, again thyrohyoid and uh, this is uh, one of the constrictor muscles of the pharynx I believe it is the inferior constrictor muscle of the pharynx uh, this is anterior belly of the digastric muscle uh, attaching to the digastric fossa of the mandible uh, this is uh, mylohyoid forming uh, floor of the a submental triangle and also part of the floor of the submandibular triangle, mylohyoid. Uh, again, this is mylohyoid, maybe here, mylohyoid. Uh, this was anterior belly of the uh, digastric, and this is its posterior belly. Posterior belly of the digastric, and uh, above that, we've got the stylohyoid. See, this is it. This is the stylohyoid from the stylo process to the hyoid bone. This is stylohyoid. Uh, this is a mandibular salivary gland. Uh, this is sublingual salivary gland, and this one is submandibular salivary gland. Uh, from the uh, suprahyoid muscles, uh, the anterior belly of digastric, and also the uh, mylohyoid muscles are supplied uh, through nerve to mylohyoid, uh, which is a branch from the inferior alveolar nerve, and that's a branch of the mandibular nerve. Uh, the posterior uh, belly of the digastric and also the uh, stylohyoid muscles are uh, supplied through the branches from the facial nerve. Uh, this is the uh, sternohyoid muscle, uh, the sternothyroid muscle. Uh, this is again the sternohyoid muscle, uh, sternothyroid muscle. Uh, this one is uh, thyrohyoid, thyrohyoid. Uh, this was superior belly and inferior belly of the omohyoid. This is a central tendon. Uh, this is the uh, sternohyoid uh, muscle. Uh, this one behind is the sternothyroid muscle. And this is omohyoid.